Coming up next on The Voice of Alabama Politics, Dobson versus Figures. Also, another cannabis lawsuit. And the gaming bill goes to conference committee. I got to warn you, Clark, they don't play the same games here as they do at them regular casinos. Daddy, this place is great. <laughs> it's in the boys' hands now. We'll see what happens. All this and much, much more coming up next on The V. Welcome to the voice of Alabama politics, where we tackle the tough issues so you have the hard facts. I'm your host, Bill Britt, and as always, I'm joined by Susan Britt, research guru extraordinaire, and Josh Moon, investigative reporter and columnist at APR. Welcome. Hey, y'all. Hey, y'all. Hey, I tell you, this past <clears throat> week, the elections down in uh, Congressional District 2, uh, as, as Josh's friend Chevy Chase would say, I couldn't have been more surprised if I'd have woken up with my head sewn to the carpet because Samari Figures and uh, uh, Caroline Dobson were not supposed to win these races early on. They were not the favorites. Uh, the two incumbents were the favorite, or, you know, one incumbent and one person who, who had been an uh, incumbent representative in that various area. Dick Brubaker and Anthony Daniels looked like the horses that were going to win. They got beaten like rented mules, Susan. They really did. I was just I was <coughs> very shocked at the margins by what they got beat by. Daniels at 61% of the vote. Uh, and then Dobson took Brubaker with 58%. I mean, those are some whopping numbers. Yeah. Yeah. They really are now. Samari, he he kind of he was good in Montgomery County, and Dobson was good. She had strong support in Mobile, although Brubaker did lead in Montgomery. He still could yeah. not pull it off. But I think Josh, it was money, 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 wasn't it? Yeah, I think so. I think uh, if you look at, at both of those campaigns, they were very well funded. Um, uh, it, well, in, in in Figure's case, it was it was less of the campaign than, and more so a super PAC uh, mm -hmm. that was involved in, in helping him send out mailers and and, so, and doing some ads and some other things uh, that was related to the cryptocurrency folks right. that got involved in the race. Uh, you know, with, with Dobson, um, you know, it was her money. Yeah. Uh, a lot a lot of it was her money, and then she poured a, a ton of it into it. She went um, she went negative. On, on Brew Baker attacked him, um, you know. And I'll say, I will say, you know, when, when you say you go negative, uh, a lot of times it, it brings up you know the image of, of just nasty insults. And really, her insults were more uh, to give her some credit. Her insults were more uh, uh, based on you know his votes and things like that. Now, I think a lot of it was misconstrued, and and she played a, a you know she played a role uh, in this thing, this Trumpian role uh, that you know to, to kind of out Trump uh, Brew Baker <coughs> in this thing, but. You know, that's uh, at least it wasn't uh, some sort of a nasty personal attack. So I'll, I'll say that right. uh, for her. But, you know, uh, so, yeah, it, it was a surprise to me. You know, I figure uh, what what was really interesting, especially on the Democratic side, is is people seem to be taking the uh, th this attitude of, of residency uh, very seriously. Yeah. Well, you're talking, yeah. well, yeah. it was the residency issue, the residency issue. Well, what happened to Napoleon Bracey? <laughs> you know, you know, or, or uh, I mean, it just—I uh, yeah. don't understand, you know, where where, where y'all drew the line on on residency, and it, it seemed to me that it had a lot more to do with mailers talking about residency yeah. than it did the actual residency. Well, I think, and again, uh, not to pick favorites, I, I think that uh, Mrs. Dobson, should she be the victor, would serve the Republican interest mm -hmm. down there. Uh, very well. I think if Samari Figures is elected, he would serve the Democrat interest there very well. I, I tend to think uh, where Shamari Figures was more concerned about issues that affected the district, uh, Ms. Dobson, like so many Republicans, 
didn't really run on the issues mm -hmm. of the district. She ran on the hot button issues of, of Republican red meat, you know, the border. Uh, in fact, uh, sending kind of sending uh, legal citizens back to Mexico, children that had been born yeah. here, which under the Constitution, they are citizens. Yeah. She wanted to send them parents and them yeah. back to their I, places. And I think what happens in, is the in the heat of the rhetoric, they forget the Constitution. Of course, she is a, an attorney. I'm sure she knows that's, that their birthright. That's a hell of a statement. I guess I can't say that's a hell of a statement. In the heat of the of the rhetoric, they forget the constitution. <laughs> well, uh, yeah, yeah. I we, think we we've got a lot of examples of that. that uh, yeah, you know, I mean, we do. We have too many. Is the problem? Yeah, yeah. It's it's a bit of a problem. Uh, you know, listen. I, what what I find what I find troubling the most about uh, uh, about Miss Dobson is that she's obviously a very well educated individual. She's a Harvard educated. Yeah, person, she is. All right, and uh, she she's gone to to the finest schools for her her entire life. There's no doubt ab uh, about it that she's smart and she's uh, she's cunning and she knows what she's doing here. And there's no way in the world that she believes half the crap that's come out. Oh of her no, mouth. no, and no, so, no, no. And, and but you're right. You're 100 percent right about Shamari Figures. He's talked about the issues. He's addressed the issues he connects better with the folks at, on the ground level there and so it's going to actually come down to a race between two people one who is talking about issues and coming up with solutions to solve problems for real people down there and another one who's just running on the fact that there's an r outside her yeah name. well and what we don't need is more barry moores in mm -hmm. congress the yeah. do nothings the obstructionists and and so i i would like to think she's not that i mean uh you know I, most of our uh, delegation is not that. Mm -hmm. Mike Rogers is not that. Uh, even Gary Palmer is really not that. Uh, Adderholt, not that. Mm -hmm. But, you know, you've got one bad apple, and we hope that people don't take that message and think, oh, Barry Moore won. He went because he's so MAGA. No, it was a bad campaign. And half that was his district to begin with. They already loved his idiot. Of course, you know, we still have to go through an election to see who's actually going to win yeah. district two. Yeah. And that's going to be very, very interesting. I think it's going to be very telling as well. Well, and, and you know, that I think it's going to, if you look at the turnout, the Democrats turned out in greater numbers mm -hmm. than the Republicans did. They certainly did. Uh, they turned out in much greater numbers. Now, it will be a general election with Donald Trump on the ballot, so that will have an effect, mm -hmm. but you also have black voters <clears throat> who the first time in their lives have had an opportunity to vote for a candidate, their choice. I will say, I uh, want to skip over just real quickly. We only got about a minute. Uh, the Alabama legislature last week picked up, uh, the, finally picked up this package, uh, you know, working for Alabama, mm -hmm. which has got the tax child tax credit in it mm -hmm. and some other good things for the state. Other than that, they have done scant little to help the people, the working people of Alabama, other than those MAGA people. They've been feeding them sirloin and T-bone steak the entire session. Shame on them. It's, it, you know, and this also package also has in it, you know, a vocational opportunities for people. Yeah. Uh, you know, the, I mean, welders make extraordinary money. I mean, carpenters too. And and so this opens up opportunities other than college education. Well, actually something that might help the working people, the working families of Alabama, they finally have gone to work on it. Anyway, we're going to leave it right there. You're watching The V, the voice of Alabama politics. We'll be right back. home is your most valuable asset. But what if someone tried to steal it from you? Property fraud is one of the fastest growing areas of fraud in the country today. As a district attorney, I've seen firsthand the devastating effects of property fraud. That's why I'm proud to support the Montgomery County Probate Court's REACT program. REACT is designed to protect your property and to give you peace of mind. By signing up, you'll receive an email notification if a document is filed against your property. This program is a game changer. It has the potential to prevent fraud and protect countless homeowners throughout Montgomery County. So don't wait. Sign up for REACT today and protect your home. Protect your home with REACT. Sign up today.
Welcome back to The V, the voice of Alabama politics. Josh, this uh, past week, a new lawsuit has popped up uh, having to deal with the Medical Cannabis Commission. Surprise, surprise, They more lawsuits. Right now, the legislature is looking at a fix uh, that would basically remove the Cannabis Commission from the most of the selection process of giving licenses to folks because they've done such a terrible job at it. But there's also a lost new lawsuit, which you wrote about, which also offers a fix if the legislature fails to act. Uh, yeah, it's um, it's essentially to remove the Alabama Medical Cannabis Commission altogether yes. from the process of licensing, <laughs> uh, and in which the the judge would appoint a, uh, the circuit court judge James Anderson in Montgomery would would appoint a special master uh, to to oversee the process, and, and you know I, again. Both of these processes, just to, just to let people know that there is a, a legitimate problem that is, that is taking place here, yeah. all right? it, because both the legislature sees it and the court uh, sees it yeah. uh, as well, because both of them are looking at it. It's simply finding somebody to come in and say, here are the basic requirements under the law. Which companies meet those basic requirements? The Alabama Medical Cannabis Commission, through four attempts at this point, has been unable to do that basic thing. And what has happened, Susan, is John McMillan has no control over his staff, mm -hmm. and therefore the staff has run amok. Mm -hmm. They've ignored the statute, the law that says you have to do A, B, C, D, and E. They go, well, you can do A, and if you don't do B or C, we're okay. And really, if you don't do any of them, if we like you, that's okay, too. Yeah, of course, you know, at some point in there, we're going to find who liked their money more. But, I mean, it's a it's a checklist. It's it, You know, you go, do they pass this? Yes. Do they pass this? No. Okay, you're out. But no, only one out of the nine that they had selected in these processes going forward uh, in the past year, one had the $2 million performance bond but what that's we've, required. But what we've seen, and both of you know this, what we've seen is mm -hmm. companies that ticked off every box. Yes. Every box. Yes. Did not get a license, whereas yeah. big multi-state operators who did not meet the criteria mm -hmm. got them. Yeah. I know yeah, I'm, that's it. two you know, that uh, never got discussed. In any of this, the two of them that I know, because I went and ticked their boxes myself. Yeah. And they, these two past were never discussed. Josh? Yeah, you know, you know, I, I just, I think there's some question whenever somebody files a lawsuit from time to time, as to, like it's sour grapes. You know, right. these people have sour grapes and they're filing this lawsuit. Well, I, you know, I just want you to think if you're running this one of these companies, okay, or you're invested in one of these companies. And you go out and you say, oh, well, we have to get a performance bond. We have to uh, we have to secure a facility because that's a requirement in the law. Yeah. This is spelled out in the law. We have to be able to, uh, to meet production deadlines and be ready to produce product within 60 days because that's in the law as well. Yeah. Uh, and there are other other things in the law. And these people went out at, at certain companies and spent some of them millions of dollars yeah. to comply with this, this law because – they felt sure if they did these things, they would meet the requirements of the law and that they would be able to get a license to operate in this state. And then somewhere along the way, this commission just arbitrarily changed what was required in the laws. And that's the reason for the lawsuits that are happening right here, because these people that they've given license to don't meet those basic requirements. They haven't spent that money. They've not invested in this state the way that they're supposed to. And that was the main requirement that the legislature had when they passed this thing. And that's why they're so ticked. And, and the thing is, and I don't understand this, if, if we advised, I mean, if any boss... Uh, had staff that ignored the rules mm -hmm. of the game, whatever it is, if you ignore the rules, you're going to get your butt fired, or at least you should. But for mm -hmm. some unknown reason, time and time again, John McMillan has let his staff ignore the rules. And then he's trying to protect them 
to say, oh, well, nobody's ignoring the rules here. It's clear. There's, it's unambiguous mm -hmm. that they have circumvented the very rules. And if I were in the legislature, I would get somebody's butt. I have said from day one of that first selection that I would have fired the entire staff and start it over. And anybody who works for me knows that I would do that. Yeah. And in a heartbeat. Yeah. But I went through at least 30 of these companies myself and checked off their criteria. Nothing matched what decision they made. Yeah. Nothing. Well, as you have always told me, firings will continue until morale improves. Absolutely. But uh, that does not seem to be the case, Josh, over at the Medical Cannabis Commission, where you can you can thump those at the rules, at the legislature, and uh, you just keep keep getting them big paychecks. Uh, what a, yeah. a, a, a Parker report here. I want to get to this. Uh, shows it, it really talks about the low uh, property taxes that Alabama plays and then the high, really high sales tax that we pay. And it, it goes into why there's so much inequity in Alabama, in the school systems, and, and the way we fund things, because we don't use property taxes to fund things. That's, that's a giveaway to, to big farmers, to uh, mm -hmm. big timber. Uh, that, 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 that's giveaway money. Oh, yeah. What we do is we tax regular citizens to death. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's kind of <coughs> what it was designed in the Constitution, to my, as far as I know. And now we're going to raise the tax on Internet sales. <laughs> so so <laughs> you we go. tax them again. You know, so what happened to these they no more taxes a, pledges? They, they, they should call it a fee. Well, yeah. You know, you know, there's no, it's no more taxes that you can see, right? Yeah. It's uh, that's the reason. It's also it's also built into the our fine system that we have. Yeah. You know, that's the reason why our court costs are so exorbitant. I mean, you you can't it, you you've essentially priced a whole section of the uh, of of Alabama society out of the court system uh, by requiring these exorbitant fees uh, to to come in and file anything. Yeah. And then if you happen to get a ticket. You know, a, a speeding. Most people don't realize this. A speeding ticket in this state only costs, I think, thirty-five or forty bucks. Uh, but the fees that are associated with it bump it up to around two hundred dollars. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, you know that that is all built into this problem that we have. In which, and people say, well, if it's ten percent for me, it's ten percent for you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But 10% matters a whole lot more to a guy earning $25,000 <coughs> than it does to a person earning $250,000. That's, right. That's right. All right. That's, That's right. the unfairness yeah. part of this. That's right. It is not fair. It's a regressive tax system that punishes the poor mm -hmm. and enables the rich. But that's the Alabama way. We have to leave it right there. You're watching The V. We'll be right back. Today, Montgomery is a safer city. It's time to shift the narrative and take control of our future. We're reopening community centers, remediating blight, and revitalizing neighborhoods across the city. And we're unleashing new opportunities. Over the past year, companies have invested a record-setting $2 billion in Montgomery and created 2,000 jobs. This is a new Montgomery. And together, we're reimagining the possibilities. As a paramedic, you wouldn't believe the things that we've seen. I've seen all types of horrible things. I mean, we're there basically picking up the pieces from your worst day. Everyone is just driving and not paying attention. We all have the same goal. All of us want to go home alive and safe and harm nobody else in the process. Slow down. Be careful. Care about the other people on the road. Don't be the reason that someone else doesn't go home tonight. Welcome back to The V, the voice of Alabama politics. Back at the beginning of the session, the Alabama House of Representatives passed a comprehensive gaming bill that was the strongest, the best bill any of us have seen in a generation. A bill similar to the one that the Senate voted on and passed two years. Mm -hmm. When that bill hit the Senate, 
It went through the meat grinder and what came out on the other side was chicken feed. That's all we got. Something that will be nothing to the people of Alabama will not help education, will not help uh, expand rural health care, will not do a lot of things that the House version did. Now, the House version, they said we're not concurring with the Senate version, and then they decided they wanted to go to conference. Well, uh, Senator Greg Reed came out and said, the President Pro Tem, Greg Reed came out and said, well, we got to think about it. Well, they thought about it. And finally, this past week, they pulled the bill out of the basket and they went to conference committee, Susan. Mm-hmm. That's our only hope. Right. And they pay, the Senate conferees are Bobby Singleton, uh, Greg Albritton, and Gun- Garland Gudger, Garland Gudger uh, which should be a, a good selection there. Um, it will be interesting to see what ha- actually happens in, ca- uh, in conference committee. But at least it's advancing somewhat. So, Josh, we have we have three members out of the House and three members out of the Senate, uh, one Democrat, mm-hmm. two Republicans in, in each conference uh, committee. Or, uh, the six, there's four and, and uh, two. two. Uh, it, it looks like a good group. Uh, they look like the kind of lawmakers that might be able to reach a compromise. But we are now at a wait and see, aren't we? Yeah, for for the most part, uh, it, it is kind of a wait and see. You're right; it is a good group of, of folks that can get in, and I think, and not not just for gambling, but I think for pretty much any issue. Right. If you put this group of people in a room, I think most people would say, "Well, you put six reasonable people mm-hmm. in a room, yeah, uh, you know that that could that could negotiate out pretty much any sort of a a, a piece of legislation." And, and so I, I feel better about that, knowing that that those it's, it's these six people uh, going in there. But you're right; this is this bill that we have, this comprehensive bill from the House. Was was the best bill that we're ever going to see. Yeah. Uh, and, and the reason it's, listen, it, is it perfect? No, it's not perfect. Okay. There are certain things that I would, I would certainly change out of this bill, but you know, perfect is often the enemy of good in this situation because perfect doesn't get passed. Right. All right. And it's not a perfect bill if you can't get it passed. And this bill, I think you, you could get it passed if you got everybody kind of on the same page because it was a very good bill that addressed a lot of the problems and it, it, it issued out regulation that was acceptable to all the folk, the interested parties involved. And that has very rarely been the case. Yeah. And the only, and the other thing is where the Senate version would not only cost the state money, I mean, uh, you know, money that it did not realize, mm-hmm. it really will not fund the mm-hmm. mechanism to enforce the law. Right. And without the enforcement uh, portion of it, uh, you're going to see these bootleg joints, these, these one-armed bandits mm-hmm. in every grocery store, beauty salon, and, and sushi bar in the state, uh, and that, Josh, defeats the whole purpose of why they initially went down this road. Yeah, it's a uh, you know you, you it's it's just yeah, you're right about the enforcement part of it, but even more so, it's uh, it, the the things that people actually cared about in the original bill, and we, and when you do polling about gambling, the things that they wanted to pay for are education related expenses, specifically college scholarship programs and the like. And that was in the House version of this bill. Yeah. We had free two year college, including a lot of workforce development stuff that was in there. And then on top of that, we had a, an element that could it, it do something to aid rural health care. Now, yeah. people speculated uh, that it was Medicaid expansion. It was not. Yeah. That, that was just a line that was used by a lot of people to try to kill the bill. Um, and, but there was we were going to do really good things in this bill uh, with the one point two billion dollars that we were projected to receive annually. And now we've taken that in the Senate version and you have the same number of casinos, yeah. but you're not going to play the same games in them. Uh, you're going to have a state lottery and there's no sports wagering, although there's still going to be two billion dollars worth of illegal sports yeah. wagering yeah. in the state. And and for all of that, for all the same casinos and all the same problems that you're going to have. Uh, you're going to lose $700 million a year. And one of the things, Susan, we are hearing, and I believe this is true, is that because they had so many new members in the Senate and nobody took the reins in the Senate, there was no leadership in the Senate, Mm -hmm. because they had so many new members, they did not understand the nuances of this. And therefore, groups like the uh, Alabama Policy Mm -hmm. Institute 
uh, and Alpha Insurance were able to go in there and lie and, 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 and tell them falsehoods so that they believed one thing and it actually was the opposite. So over time, they've been educated and it seems like there's more of them that now go, oh, I see why the house bill is the way it is. Right. I think they got a baptism of fire as to how difficult it is to navigate lobbying interests in Montgomery here right out, right out of the gate. Uh, because the, there are very strong lobbyists on both sides of the issue here. And they really, uh, they, they took advantage of the fact that these were newbies. But I think they're more educated now. I think they can do a, a better, you know, have a better idea of what they're voting for. And let's not forget that also for the sheriffs and whatever, this gives them some teeth to get rid of the illegal. Yeah. Because the illegal game in the, in the back of the, you know, hair, hair salon, it, it's a misdemeanor. So you go, you pay a fine, you come back, you reopen, you go, yeah. you pay a fine. If it becomes a felony, which this bill will do that. When I know that there were people who, who probably wondered about it being in the back of the sushi bar. But see, what they don't know is up on Sand Mountain, Betty's Beauty Box, they have they have a sushi you know, part back there. They have a, a sushi bar, you can get your hair and nails done, and also chainsaw sharpening on Saturdays. But Josh, before we get out of here, I, I do want to, what? You never been there? Betty's Beauty Box and Sushi Bar. Uh, before we get out of here, I think it's important to, 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 for uh, individuals to understand what the last thing you said, education will benefit greatly in this state if this passes. Yeah, it, it is. Uh, there, there's a dedicated education component in this bill, in the in the House version of the bill, uh, that was removed in the Senate version, and that dedicated component goes in and make uh, puts the lottery funds into a special account to pay for two year college scholarships and also to pay for increased security at public schools all around the state. And I think those two things are very very important. I don't think I know. I've seen the polling. Yep. They're very important to voters out there, and they're very important to the support of this thing. Yeah, people want this to pay for an education mm -hmm. in Alabama. We can we can give two year college scholarships. We can do we can do training, technical training. Mm -hmm. We can do a lot of things with this money from the House bill. We cannot do any of it with the Senate bill. You've been watching the V, the voice of Alabama politics. You watch us because we watch them. <laughs>